three months after the Oregon District mass shooting. He put his hands around her neck and started choking her. The I-Team uncovers new information about the shooter, Connor Betts, and his violent past right before he made his hit and rape list. Pulled out a, a razor knife out of his pocket and just glared at me. As our investigation examines... No, I'm strongly opposed to that bill. The growing debate... It needs change to legislation. ...over the law allowing Betts' juvenile criminal records to be wiped clean. The New Center 7 I team uncovered new information about the lack of a document trail surrounding Oregon District mass shooter Connor Betts. Ohio law required any of Betts' juvenile red flag records to be expunged just about two years before Betts legally bought two guns he took with him to commit the mass shooting. That is now at the center of a potential law change. As the I-team's John Bedell dug deeper, he discovered some of Betts' high school hit and rape list records, which were expunged, likely showed a graphic violence pattern dating back to middle school. It's been a while. China Ellenberg started going to school with Connor Betts in seventh grade. The next year, 2009, was the first time she says she witnessed Betts turn violent. Made it very clear that he was not someone that I wanted to align myself with. They were at a Sugar Creek Township restaurant for their 8th grade spring musicals cast party. After Betts got up from the table, Ellenberg's stepsister took a seat. He comes back and he says, you know, you need to move because that's my spot. My sister looked at him and said, you know, no, I have, I have something to ask China. You know, I'm not moving. So he, he put his hands around her neck and started choking her. Ellen Burke said the family never pressed charges. Did he say anything when this happened? Not really. Basically just that she needed to move. After I got him away from her, he kind of glared at me while we were leaving. Now, when I say Connor Betts, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Um, evil. I'd say evil more than any other. Just, just pure evil. Just a few months later, in August 2009, Matt Terry was at the Lions Club's annual Bellbrook Festival. Terry told me Betts was following him and his group of friends all night. So I went up to him and I tried to get him to, to leave us alone, to go away. And that's when Connor pulled out a, a razor knife out of his pocket, like a replaceable, all the guys at construction carry him. He held it about 8 to 10 inches away from my throat and just glared at me. Terry did not report the incident to police, but he says Sugar Creek Township detectives interviewed him about the knife incident in Bellbrook High School's principal's office just a few weeks later. It was the day school officials and police discovered Betts' hit and rape list at the school. Terry says the girls he was with during the knife incident were on the rape list. I actually had to fill out a police report after the hit and rape list came out. Uh, my name had got brought up and, and the cars, you know, violent tendencies and violent pasts. Ellenberg remembers the rape list, too. One of her best friends was on it. You know, I asked her, I said, you know, why do you think he put you there? And he had approached her, said he wanted to go on a date with her, and she turned him down. Terry told me in late 2009, Greene County prosecutors subpoenaed him to testify at Betts' juvenile court trial. Then he says the court sent him a follow-up letter saying there would not be a trial because Betts took a plea deal. I went to Sugar Creek Police in August and asked for any documents the department had tied to Betts. New Center 7 also filed the same public records request with Greene County's juvenile court clerk. Both agencies responded to those requests with the section of Ohio law dealing with juvenile record expungement. By the time Connor Betts went on his murderous rampage here along East 5th Street, there was no official paper trail documenting red flags in his violent past. His juvenile record had been expunged. Now there's movement here at the State House in Columbus to raise the age at which people can have their juvenile records wiped clean. You know, I don't know what they charged him with as a juvenile, but if you have a kill list and a rape list, that's certainly not normal behavior. Former Montgomery County Sheriff and current state rep Phil Plummer wants juvenile records to be available to law enforcement and courts for an additional five years. Because if you look at the uh, backgrounds of a lot of these mass shooters, they had juvenile records. Plummer is co-sponsoring a bill that would change expunging juvenile records from 23 to 28 years old. Dayton police say Betts, who was 24 when he committed the Oregon District mass shooting, legally bought the two guns he had with him that night. Currently, when Ohioans' juvenile records are expunged at 23, like Betts's were, they're destroyed. Not even police know about them. Only murder, aggravated murder, and rape convictions are never expunged or sealed. Plummer is focused on sealing records, 
Six months after a convicted juvenile's probation ends, Plummer's proposal says law enforcement and courts could still see sealed records until someone's 28, but the public could not. It's for many juveniles who have multiple felony records who shouldn't be able to get a gun five years after they become an adult. I interview a lot of children who want to have their records sealed and expunged. Montgomery County Juvenile Court Judge Anthony Capizzi told me he's, quote, strongly opposed to Plummer's proposal. I'm offended by it. The whole purpose of this community and this society is to help children. And changing the age of 24 to 28, then when someone does it and they're 29, Phil's going to ask to raise it to 32. You know, come on. Capizzi argues children should be able to move on with their lives after being punished. I don't believe the difference would have changed what happened in the Oregon District. But Ellenberg, who knows about Connor Betts' violent past firsthand and also had a family member in the Oregon District the night of the mass shooting, says it's a problem that must be treated urgently. I, I just want something to happen that changes it. Now it appears it's up to lawmakers to see if how Ohio treats juvenile records will change or not. For the I-Team, John Bedell, New Center 7. The expunging of Betts' legal records means it's unclear if Plummer's legislation would have stopped him from buying guns he used during the mass shooting. That's why WHIO and other media outlets are appealing to Ohio's Supreme Court to obtain Betts' Bellbrook Sugar Creek School records, which could contain hit and rape list details. That appeal follows a three-judge panel saying last month the school district proved Betts' records are not public under existing law. They also said there is no precedent for releasing student records after their death. Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost has sided with the media, saying after a student dies, privacy protections do not apply. Meantime, Betz's friend Ethan Colley, who federal agents say never knew about Betz's plan, remains in jail. Colley is accused of buying and storing Betz's body armor, a drum magazine, and a gun part used during the shooting in his apartment. And live right now on our new and easier to use WHIO streaming app, you will find our complete interview with Connor Betts' former classmate. That is a free download on your Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV device.